Hello, everybody out there in YouTube land. It is Amly, your everyday light worker, and I am back to the topic of toxic work environments. So, I want to talk about um, in this module what is a toxic work environment. So, we're just going to be talking about what that is. So, what do you think it is? Like a toxic work environment, that's a term that you probably heard. What does it mean? Um, it means that the work environment is problematic, that people are not comfortable there. It's difficult to be happy there. So it's, a, it's an environment where work is pretty much really difficult for everyone. And this has become more and more of a problem. So let's dig into what it is. It can be defined as any workplace where the culture, practices, or people contribute to an unhealthy or negative atmosphere that affects the well-being, productivity, and success of its employees. Toxic behaviors can come in many forms. Um, some of the most pervasive ones are bullying, harassment, passive-aggressive behavior, and just general negativity. So in this environment, employees feel unsupported, disrespected, undervalued. They're usually created by a combination of unpleasant factors, such as a difficult boss, an unmanageable workload, a lack of communication, or bullying. Now, confronting toxic behaviors in the workplace is not easy, but it's essential. It has to be done if you want to maintain your well-being and some people would say thrive in that environment. I That's where I split with a lot of the typical advice. I don't think you can thrive in a toxic work environment. I'm not going to, you know, hold that out as an option, really. Because toxic work environments are toxic, which is to say they're dangerous, they're, health, they're unhealthy for your health. So the best thing that you can do with regard to a toxic work environment is just get out of it, especially if you're dealing with a boss. And I've seen that a lot in my um, law, pra law practice. Some bosses are just very, um, very toxic. They, they get off, they get a thrill out of harming people. And so if you're working for that kind of person, there's nothing that you can do except to get out of the work environment. And a toxic boss may actually make that difficult. So what's it like being in a toxic work environment? In that environment, employees feel like they're walking on eggshells most of the time. They're worried about what they say or do. They feel like they can't really express themselves freely. They feel like their opinions aren't valued. This leads to feelings of anxiety, depression, and low self-esteem at work. In a toxic work environment, you can feel powerless and helpless. Um, so, you know, confronting all of that can be challenging, but it's essential if you want to create a healthy work environment for yourself and for the others who are in the, that environment. And a lot of times toxicity, toxicity is contagious. So people feel like, you know, it's kill or be killed, dog eat dog. I have to be toxic if I want to survive this environment. So people will, people who weren't necessarily toxic are going to um, adopt those behaviors just to be able to survive the work day. So that's, it's really hard not to be toxic in a toxic work environment because people feel like, you know, when Rome do as the Romans do. So I have to be toxic if I'm going to survive the toxicity of this environment. So as I said before, the behaviors are like bullying, harassment, micromanaging, a lot of gossiping. Once you see some of these behaviors, you can develop a strategy for dealing with them. So let's let's get into um, first what this video is about. It's just identifying the signs of a toxic work environment. So it can be incredibly detrimental to the health and well-being of employees. It can lead to decreased job satisfaction, increased stress, and physical and mental health problems. Unfortunately, they're very common in like they're in every industry. And they can be difficult to identify until the damage has been done. So we're going to look at what the key traits of a toxic work environment are and provide some advice on how you can recognize these key traits and address them. So what I found in my experience as um, not only 
a litigator, but also working in workplace conflicts, is that poor leadership is one of the main drivers of a toxic work environment. So what makes leadership poor? Um, they lack accountability. So poor leadership is not going to take any kind of responsibility for their wrong actions. They're going to take all of the credit, even if they aren't really even responsible for their right actions. They're going to blame others for their mistakes, and they're not going to um, share the credit for things that have gone right. So that's poor leadership. You know, a good leader is not going to do those things. They're going to take responsibility for their actions. They're not going to blame other people for their mistakes. They're going to give their team credit when their team is responsible for their success. So, you know, that's what poor leadership looks like and what it doesn't look like. So we'll talk about both. Um, poor leadership shows favoritism towards certain employees and pits them against each other. So if you've got a leader who, you know, just favors certain employees, and usually it's the more toxic employees that they're going to favor, and that's going to create resentment and division among the team. They're not, the team is not going to like the, the, and that person that they're, you know, showing the favoritism towards is usually like a mini me. They're acting like the leader and, um, and the leader is toxic. So that's what you can expect among, from poor leadership. Poor leadership has a lack of transparency. So they're going to withhold critical information that you need to know. They're going to be dishonest about the company's goals and strategies. Poor leadership has a lack of direction. They're not going to provide any clear direction or guidance. And the employees feel lost and uncertain in their roles. And then that causes, you know, backstabbing and infighting and just conflict among the employees about who is doing what work, when, um, that sort of thing. So, you know, you can see how all of this is toxic. A uh, poor leader is a micromanager. A poor leader micromanages their employees, doesn't trust them to do their jobs properly. That creates an atmosphere of distrust, which of course is toxic. Um, a lack of support. A poor leader is not going to support their employees when they need it the most. And that leads to feelings of isolation and burnout. Poor communication. A poor leader is not going to effectively communicate with their team. That leads to misunderstandings and confusion among the team. A poor leader behaves inconsistently and it creates an unpredictable work environment and it erodes trust among employees. So with poor leadership, you have... Um, just people don't know what to expect from day to day. And that is just very stressful. People want to know when I come to work, this is what I'm going to be dealing with. And, you know, with inconsistent behavior, you just don't know, which leads to the whole walking on eggshells um, component. A poor leader is going to use bullying, intimidation tactics to assert their authority. And employees are going to feel unsafe and unsupported. So overall, poor leadership creates a toxic work environment by creating a culture of mistrust, uncertainty, and fear. It's important for all leaders to be accountable, transparent, supportive, and communicative if you want to have a positive and healthy work environment. Unfortunately, a lot of workplaces don't. And this is especially true in workplaces that are corrupt. So if you're in a corrupt working environment, there's absolutely nothing, I'm, I promise you, there's nothing that you can do to make this environment better. Corrupt working environments just look to suck all of the energy out of whatever employees it pulls into its corrupt little web, suck all that out of them and leave them for dead. I promise you, I've seen this over and over and over again. So corruption involves dishonesty, theft, unethical behavior, in the workplace, it's going to create a very toxic work environment. And the presence of these traits in an organization typically causes really high turnover rates. In a workplace where management and employees engage in such behavior, there's going to be a culture of distrust and fear. Employees often feel pressured to engage in such behavior and to cover it up. And that leads to stress and burnout. And it leads to low morale and a lot a lack of job satisfaction, and that results in high turnover. So if an employee believes that they're forced to engage in unethical or illegal behavior, they fear for their own job security, as well as legal repercussions from what they've done. 
and this causes the employees to seek employment elsewhere. In addition, such behavior will tarnish the reputation of the organization and makes it difficult to attract and retain top talent. Third, there's incompetence. Incompetence clearly creates a toxic work environment. So incompetent leadership um, contributes to a, a, a toxic work environment in the same way that corruption does. And incompetence and corruption go hand in hand because the corrupt components of the organization are not going to allow people to be um, competent. So when you see people within the organization or you see leadership being incompetent, they're going to lack the skills or the knowledge to effectively lead a team or organization. And that's going to result in poor decision making. So with corruption, you usually have a lack of transparency. So a lot of the leaders are not going to have the knowledge they need to effectively lead the team or an organization. It's going to be a lack of direction. There's going to be unclear communication and a lot of other issues that negatively impact the work environment. So employees are going to feel frustrated and stressed or undervalued due to the lack of effective leadership. And that's going to lead to turnover and decreased productivity and other problems. So it's important for organizations to ensure that their leaders and managers have the necessary skills and knowledge to effectively lead and manage a team. You would think that there would be a great deal of investment in this. I'm here to tell you there's not. Um, it just seems to be six on one hand, half dozen on the other. I would say in all of my work experience and all the work environments that I've looked over, and it's been plenty, I would say that you've got competent, good leadership in maybe 10%. Like 10% makes up um, the, the level of leadership that, that, that where you have extreme competence and really good leadership. And, you know, 10% is probably really, really bad. And then the 80% is, you know, people are like C plus, C minus between that range most of the time. So that's what you're looking for. You know, if you've got somebody in the C plus, C minus range, there are things that you can do to push them more to C plus as opposed to C minus. But that's what most people are working with, that C plus, C minus behavior. Now, there's high turnover rates. A high turnover rate is a common symptom of a toxic work environment because the employees feel burnt out, undervalued, unsupported. Um, both incompetence and corruption within the leadership are going to cause high turnover pretty predictably. So whenever you see high turnover, that's a major red flag that something is wrong with an organization. In a toxic work environment, information is going to be withheld and misrepresented it, misrepresented it. That leads to confusion, mistrust, a lack of motivation. Other signs of a toxic workplace include a lack of respect, a lack of accountability, a lack of transparency. All these behaviors contribute to a negative work environment and they hinder the success of an organization as a whole. Lack of communication is a, so communication is a vital component of any healthy workplace. Therefore, one of the most common traits of a toxic work environment is a lack of communication. In a toxic work environment, communication is often poor or non-existent, and that leads to misunderstandings, missed deadlines, low morale. Usually, employees feel disconnected from their colleagues and misunderstandings arise. This leads to feelings of isolation, resentment, and frustration among team members. Conflict and a lack of trust between colleagues develops. This is particularly damaging in situations where employees are working in teams or on projects together. Without clear communication, team members are going to be unsure of what is expected of them and they're going to feel like they're not being heard or valued. And this usually causes frustration, low morale, and a general sense of disengagement. Lack of trust and support. Another sign of a toxic workplace is a lack of trust. When trust is lacking, employees may feel that their contributions are not valued and they may feel that their workplace is not appreciated, their work is not appreciated. And this leads to a lack of motivation and a decrease in productivity. A toxic workplace can also be characterized by a lack of support. When employees don't feel supported by their manager or colleagues, they will hesitate to take risks or speak up about their concerns. And again, this leads to a culture of fear and mistrust. And that's just damaging to the overall health of the workplace. Micromanagement, again, is another common trait of a toxic work environment. 
in a toxic workplace, managers or supervisors micromanage their employees, and that can lead to feelings of resentment, mistrust, and anxiety. Micromanagement is often a sign that managers don't trust their employees to do their jobs effectively, which can be incredibly demotivating. And it also leads to a lack of autonomy and creativity as employees feel as though they're not able to make decisions and contribute to ideas without seeking their approval from their managers. And even if they seek it, they probably won't get it, not from a micromanager. Favoritism, we've talked about how some bad leadership plays favorites. It creates division in the workplace. It creates an unfair workplace. Employees feel discouraged and unappreciated unappreciated and then they like it causes conflict among the employees because their the employees are constantly going for each other in that kind of environment lack of recognition another trait of a toxic work environment is a lack of good of recognition for good work now if you did a good job you should be recognized for that but when employees feel as though their contributions aren't valued or appreciated it leads to feelings of resentment and frustration it also leads to a decrease in motivation and engagement because employees feel like, you know, whatever they do, it doesn't really make a difference. So it also leads to high turnover rates. Employees become disheartened and they seek employment elsewhere. And that just makes sense. This is the worst, blame culture. So blame culture is related to a lack of recognition. It's what comes next. And it's even worse than the lack of recognition is blame cultures, where employees feel pressured to take the blame for mistakes or failures, even when they're not responsible. So, you know, if the boss screws up, he's going to push it on to his employees and act like it was their fault, their idea. This creates a culture of fear. And then employees are definitely afraid to take risks. They're afraid to speak up. They're afraid of being retaliated against. And it, it just makes it a toxic work environment where nothing you do seems to have any positive effect. So people just want to tap out. Negative attitudes are a common trait of a toxic work environment. When employees are constantly complaining, gossiping, or criticizing one another, it creates a very negative atmosphere and it's difficult to escape. And this is very damaging for new employees because they feel like they're not being welcomed or they're not valued within the organization. Negative attitudes lead to decreased productivity because employees are spending a lot of their time complaining and criticizing or worrying about their co-workers instead of actually getting work done. We've talked about bullying and harassment, and um, that is probably the most damaging trait of a toxic work environment, the bullying and the harassment. So when employees are subjected to bullying or harassment, it leads to a whole range of negative physical and mental health outcomes such as depression, anxiety, PTSD, even workplace workplace violence. It leads to decreased productivity and engagement as employees are going to take more time worrying about their safety and well-being than actually doing their jobs. And it takes many forms, including verbal abuse, even as far as physical violence and definitely sexual harassment. So it's important for employers to take all reports of bullying and harassment seriously and to take steps to ensure that employees feel safe and supported. Just because it's important doesn't mean it's going to be done. So um, from what I've seen, when you have that in, when you have a bully, that's just bullying employees just because they have that supervisor or manager title and they can. Um, I don't see like human resources is pretty t toothless typically. They don't do a whole lot. They'll do, you know, they'll check off the boxes and do whatever they're supposed to do. But um, if the person is really you know, determined to be a bully. Honestly, I don't feel like there's any one except for maybe the CEO, someone really high up who can stop it. And that's sad, but it's true. That's what I've seen in my um, experience. So how do you recognize and address a toxic work environment? So it can be difficult, particularly if you're new to an organization or have been with the same company for a long time. However, there are a few signs that Indicate your workplace is toxic, poor, unclear guidance from leadership, a lack of transparency or accountability, a culture of blame or scapegoating, micromanagement, lack of trust in employees, bullying and harassment, high turnover rates, frequent complaints or grievances, a lack of diversity or inclusivity. 
what can you do if you're working in a toxic environment? If you find yourself working in a toxic environment, it can be difficult to know what to do. One of the best things that you can do is to speak up about your concerns in an assertive way, assertive manner. So we'll discuss later what that looks like. But you want to talk to your manager or an HR representative about the issues that you're experiencing and ask for their support in creating a healthier work environment. But before you do that, you, you should talk to your manager first. But before you go to HR, ask around and see if anyone else has been successful in bringing any concerns to HR. Because a lot of times HR is supposed to do something. That's what they're there for. But they don't. And you might be shocked or surprised at how little HR will do or how that will turn around against you. It depends on if the HR department is ethical, has integrity, has any experience in dealing with these kind of conflicts. Because if they don't, it's just it's going to be handled pretty poorly. So it depends from HR department to HR department. It's important for you to take care of yourself. And this involves setting boundaries, seeking support from colleagues or friends outside of work. That's critical. Finding ways to manage your stress and anxiety about the environment. When you take care of yourself, you can build resilience and maintain your mental and emotional well-being, even in a toxic workplace. And you want to do that so that you can figure out how to leave the toxic work environment. Ultimately, identifying the signs of a toxic workplace is the first step towards creating a healthier work environment for yourself and for your colleagues. And so by recognizing these behaviors and taking action to address them, you can create a more positive and productive workplace for everyone. So let's talk about, let's take a quiz to determine if your work environment is even toxic or if you're in that area, you should know. So determine if your workplace is toxic. Ask yourself the following questions. Are you constantly stressed and anxious at work? Do you feel like your boss or your colleagues are always criticizing you? How do you feel about leaders in your company or your organization? Do you feel like they're honest? Do you feel like they're trustworthy? Do you think that the leaders in your organization are lying to you or hiding things? If you feel that way, they probably are. And if they are, then that is definitely a problem. Do you feel like you can't trust anyone at work? Do a lot of employees leave the organization quickly after beginning or starting to work there? If that's happening, you're definitely in a toxic work environment. I've been there. I've been, I worked at this one place. It was absolutely the most corrupt and toxic place that I've ever worked. And it was a revolving door. And um, depending on what's going on with you and your career, you might try to stick it out and, and not um, leave, but those environments are, are so difficult that it's it's very difficult to last beyond six months in an environment like that because they're just running through the people and they don't really care about the people. So they'll just run through them and they'll keep revolving them in and out. And it, it creates a lot of insta instability in the work environment. But yeah, toxic work environments are like that. Are you afraid to speak up and express your opinions? Do you feel like you're not being treated fairly? Do you get symptoms such as headaches, stomach aches, or a lot of fatigue. If you answer yes to five or more of these questions, you're probably working in a toxic environment. And it's important to note that a toxic work environment will take a toll on your mental and physical health. It will affect your productivity, your relationships, and your overall well-being. So if you're experiencing any of these symptoms, it's, it's essential that you take action to protect yourself. So in the next modules on the toxic work environment, we will be discussing strategies for surviving and coping with that kind of environment. So we'll cover topics such as building resilience, maintaining healthy boundaries, managing toxic colleagues, and confronting toxic behaviors. We'll also discuss strategies for managing stress and anxiety and building a support network. And finding a way to transition out of that toxic workplace into a new job. But remember, and I don't know if this helps, um, but you're not alone in your experience. So a lot of employees face these similar challenges in toxic work environments. By taking proactive steps to protect yourself, 
you can maintain your mental and emotional well-being and find a way to thrive even in such a challenging work environment. I don't know about thrive. I won't say thrive, but you can survive until you can make it out. So that's what we want to do. So that's our first module on the toxic work environment, identifying the signs. I hope this helps.